hello, 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 and welcome to The Cup, the currently unnamed podcast where you always can come here first to quench your reality thirst and where we put the T in reality, period. I think this is the right one. I always have to have my music. It's, it's a vibe, it's a groove. I feel like I need to have it. I'm your girl, Lana, your resident diva, here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea, because you know I love me some tea, so if you have tea, you know what to do, hit me up. Today, I'm just drinking water. I'm just drinking water, because, you know, stay hydrated and all that, but, you know, always and always and always, I have my cup mug handy. Hold on, I'll turn this way. So there if you want to get your own cup merch you know what to do look at down there with the ticker you can get the much the merch at lanagcreations.etsy.com and uh you can have one coming your way be like the cool kids get all that and we'll have other merch cup merch coming soon we already have a hat out there and the cup we'll have others coming soon so you know and Hey y'all, it's Ashley Keenan here to talk about a, a fun few weeks of Australian Survivor. Depends on who you are. Uh, it's been fun, but it's been a little sad for a few of us. But we're here to talk about it. We're here to have a little fun. Uh, I'm going to be eating some spicy ramen, but I'm going to need to have a drink with me. So I'm drinking not my favorite. It's what I was available some uh, zero sugar Gatorade, which, but we'll get through it because we need it with the spice. <laughs> <sighs> I feel well, that. Yeah. I, I do feel that. I, yeah. We're talking about Survivor. Ashley said it. That's what we're doing. Australia Survivor. Survivor Australia. And yeah, for it, it could be fun for some, um, tragic for others. Lana Depends got to you. see me at at my saddest in person live. In person. <laughs> that was fun. I would just like to say meeting Ashley in person is the same meeting Ashley online. Ashley's just Ashley all the way around. You love it. I yeah. loved it. It was so much fun. Was I was so happy to meet you in Chicago. Oh, so, it was so fun. And we got to do one of my favorite things together is watch Survivor. Watch Survivor. Australian Survivor. So how cool how so how we talk cool. about an episode we got to watch together that doesn't right. really happen a lot so i'm very it excited does, it doesn't happen ever so i know right <laughs> we're taking it <laughs> we're gonna take it when we can get it but we're gonna start oh i should have pulled up my thing when i had the chance but i didn't because you know why i was doing other things trying to get ready for the show because logan w- was busy tonight and that just oh, that's that sucks for me because then I have to do more work when Logan is not here. But you know what? It's okay, Logan. I'm holding it down for you always. We go. We got this. We gonna do this. Here we go. So we're talking about. Um, right we're gonna talk about episode nineteen. Yeah, yeah. nineteen. What are they titled? Exit of the Queen. Exit um, of Exit the Queen. Which, this was kind of sad, but honestly, good. It was it was a move that needed to happen, I think. Yeah. Um, because can you imagine having a two time winner? Wow, that'd be crazy. That'd be crazy. <laughs> I mean, we've never seen that happen before, have we? Why couldn't we have it down uh, down under look, either? <laughs> <laughs> look, maybe not. To maybe not in Survive Australia, we haven't seen it happen before. Everybody no. can't be the queen of Survivor. Exactly. Just and, saying. But we can have the princess of Survivor watch it happen. Mm-hmm. She says, mm-hmm. You can't be my mom. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> That's what she should have said on her way out. Couldn't let you be my mom. No. <laughs> There's only so, one queen of Survivor, and her name is Sandra Diaz Twine. She will stay the queen. Mm-hmm. Queen stays, stays queen, queen. Period. And, <laughs> yes. and done. Period. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> always ready. But, always. So, um, 
we start with after Sean was eliminated and Haley made the move to eliminate Sean instead of Simon because she wanted to keep Simon. She said Simon was going to be like her little puppy and she was going to keep Simon. And um, so Sean got the boot. And when they got back to camp, George was not very happy with Nina. Speaking of twines, he was not happy with Nina twine because he just knew that Nina was the one that flipped the vote. It was supposed to be on Simon, but he knew Nina flipped it to Sean. And Nina was like, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. I voted for I'd Simon. I'd own it. I'd own it if I did it. She was like, I, if I did it, I'd own it. He was like, you should own the move. I'd be proud of if it was a move you owned it. You could have did it. And she was like, but I didn't do it. I'm not going to take a move that I, you know, I didn't do. And she was so frustrated. She was just like, I didn't do it. But she knew that Haley did it. She was like, it was Haley. I know it was Haley. And George was very, like I said, very much on the, you did it, Nina. You did it. You did it. You did it. Well, we, we, we turned to a night conversation with Haley and Nina and Haley going, yeah, Nina, yeah, Nina. you're right. I did do I it. Did do it. <laughs> she goes, but don't tell people. I'm just going to blame you on it. And Nina's like, now, wait a minute. <laughs> you said you're going to blame me. Okay, you, we'll do that. Sure. Wink, wink, wink. I'll do it. I'll play along with you that you're going to blame me for this. Mm, okay. Nina was not having that. No. <laughs> Nina was not having that whole, sure, uh, Haley, I'm just going to do your bidding and you're going to, you know. So she finds George and she's like, look. If I made the move, I would have said I made the move, but I didn't make the move. And she said, somebody else is doing stuff behind your back. And uh, like this, George, how would I know that you want 60K, bestie? How would I know that? How would I know that? Because you didn't tell me. So who, how would I know that? And he's like, who told you? Which one of the girls told you? And she was like, Haley. And he was like, oh, Haley's the the leak? And she was like, mm-hmm. And uh, George uh, is astonished, <laughs> crazy, taking like, like, what? His, his mind in that moment was blown. He wow. did not believe that out of everybody, Haley was going to be the one to tell on him and write him out when he was like, I've been trying and working so hard for me and Haley to be the final two so we can go and have a rematch and see who comes out supreme, the king or the queen and blah, blah, blah. Well, and I think it's so fascinating. This is one of the few times we've seen this season where George doesn't get his way and how he reacts to it. Yes. And- I'm not shocked he reacts a little uh, hastily, but I mean, this is the thing, and this is what I liked with George. And George has his moments of paranoia, spin out spirals, but he always reins it in when he needs to, and in order to come up with a plan that could work. And that's what happened. Like for a minute, he was for not even a minute for a while Mm -hmm. that from that moment to the next day, he was very shocked. He was going through the emotions of being betrayed by a friend who he felt like as a friend in real life, not just in the game. He's like this person. We talk to each other every day almost. And, you know, I I'm stunned. One thing I think a credit to, I can't believe I'm saying this, a credit to George's game is I think what he does really well is he knows where to channel his emotions to. And I think Mm -hmm. he does that in the confessionals to us, which is Mm -hmm. why he gets so many confessionals because he knows what to say, what to do, and where to channel his emotions rather than channeling his emotions to the other players. He knows to save it until he's with production. And I think that that gives a lot of credit to him being able 
to, um, you know, really kind of get those thoughts collected, even if he's mm-hmm. spiraling a bit. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I have to give him credit where credit's due. Of course. As, <laughs> as much as we don't like to do it, we have to do it every time. Now we, we do. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, he was very shy. And I, I get it because like when, when you're in a, in a situation where you feel like this person is one of your closest allies, the closest person in this game, somebody who you not just know inside the game, but outside of the game. And you were hoping that that relationship that you have with them outside of the game will go inside the game as well. And you can trust them to get to, you know, not turn on you so quickly, not turn on you the first opportunity to get. Now, even though this is still a game, is the, and you know you have to, I guess expect sometimes that your friends are going to turn on you. I mean, we've been in games with our friends. I've never once put on a friend out, or they've never put me out. Right? No, it happens <laughs> every day. <laughs> it happens all the time. All the time. It's, like it's just like, yeah, I like you, but this is the game that we're playing, and if, so we have. I to- can get half a mil check in my bank account. I'll buy you dinner later. That's fine. Right. <laughs> but guess what? I'm going to vote you out tonight. Exactly. <laughs> and we can have is. a drink and we can cry and talk about it later when I have that check. Right. Period. Period. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. It's so it is so. True. It is, look, I've sold people out for $5, not even $500,000. <laughs> exactly. It is what it is. If I got to screw you out of it for a, a $10, then I'm going to do what I got to do. Exactly. And we can talk about it after the game and be friends and be happy. Exactly. But, you know, I might even send you $5 of that money to buy you some McDonald's. Ah. Exactly. You can get a 20 piece almost. Like, that's great. Period. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Just add the tax. Just add the tax. Exactly. You got it. <laughs> like, that's enough. That's enough for me. I'm happy with a 20 piece. <laughs> right. Should be. Like, come oh, on. No. So, I um, mean, I think they're both players enough to recognize that, like, we got we to go after each other. And why not? Why not? Let's see who wins. It, I think it's fun. I like, I love going against the people who I'm like really the closest to and like, all right, we shooting at each other. Let's just see. Who comes out on top? Who's going to be victorious? And some days it's me and some days it's not. Exactly. Mm-hmm. But, you know, <laughs> you, you don't know until you try, right? Exactly. So I, I, know, I, I highly I, recommend voting out your friends from time to time. Just say it. You know, it's fun. work with the people you don't expect to work with. You know, I, I, it's sometimes you make even better friends with working with people you don't know. Exactly. Oh, wild. <laughs> Why? Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk right? It? Like I've got new besties now because I didn't work with my besties. Like right, it's I cute. Know. It's fun. It's real cute. But I also want to give credit to Nina in this moment because Nina recognizing that she was definitely still at the bottom and that George was on a ramp. If if George gets on a tyrant and wants to take her out, she knew she had to do something in order to get out of his line of fire and her telling him what Haley told them and Matt through Haley and Matt under the bus at the same time that and just made sure her spot was secure that now she won't be the target of you know it was it was I was like okay Nina I see you I love that for you she took the information to her benefit and got herself a few steps forward. That's honestly so future thinking, and I love that from her. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So, um, the next morning, <laughs> we- <laughs> I'm just thinking about the next morning. <laughs> The, the severe bottomness of it the all. The severe bottomness of it all. I <laughs> love Simon so much, and I I wonder if he he like knows what he's saying half the time. And like postseason, he's definitely laying into it. Like he's like making fun with it. But like, girl, I was on a Zoom watching with a lot of my friends, and they were like, ah! Did he just say severe bottomness? The severe bottomness. They're mm-hmm. like they're like mm-hmm. a bottom would never. <laughs> <laughs> A bottom would never, never. <laughs> would never. It's but so then funny. the severe bottomness of it all. Then Haley turning right around and saying, "Don't blow her." I was like, Ooh. "Huh? Like, 
We're like, Australia, we see what you're doing with this. We see edit. what y'all doing. Uh-huh. You're leaving that in the edit. Mm. They're okay. cheeky, aren't they? Oh, my God. Aren't they? <laughs> aren't they? I'm right. like, okay, it's- we got the severe bottomness and the blowing happening. Mm-hmm. Okay, I see oh, y'all. They are cheeky down there. <laughs> it's so <laughs> good. It's so good. Uh <laughs> In a group chat I'm in with Simon, he definitely said something. He's like, you know, the, the snuff hats come with a case of severe bottomness now. Like, he's he's such a good sport about it. I love him so much. Just love yes. him. <laughs> we, I will say, me and Logan was definitely doing the cheerleading for Simon yesterday during our oh. recording because you weren't here. Thank you. We're like, we will be the Simon cheerleaders for Ashley because Ashley's not here. And Simon was winning a lot. <laughs> he got a car. He got a he, car. He won a unit. I'm just so proud for him. Like no matter how his journey ends, like the journey to get wherever he ends at, I'm so proud of him. So yeah. thank you for d- taking my my cheerleading place, and I will we continue. Will. <laughs> yes. So then George he confides in Liz that they have two problems, and one of them is Matt, and Matt was on the picnic where Haley spilled the beans and Matt didn't tell him. So George is like, why wouldn't he come back and say, I know you won $60,000 because Haley da 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 da. And so George is very upset with Matt. And then also he's very hurt, still hurt with uh, Haley. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so let's go on to the reward challenge. Or Did you have something to say? Or did you want to go to the I reward think- challenge? What Haley, even if Haley it spills back on her, it makes so many cracks within that group, which is so fun to me moving forward into the end game. I agree. It's it's hilarious. It's so good. But yeah, let's go to the challenge. Yeah, so the reward challenge. Um they talk about um, you know, what happened, how you know, you know, J JLP things talking about the the votes and everything that happened. He wants to stir some drama up just a little bit to remind you what happened. We're like, (laughs) okay, JLP, I see you stirring the pot. He's just, he's, he's a pot stirrer, but it's okay. That's his job. We live for it. It's, It's so good. So the reward is they have to stack some things on a wobbly thing. And stacking some things on a wobbly thing. <laughs> just on a balance being just stacking stuff on, you know. Exactly. Whatever. And this one, I knew for sure Simon wasn't going to win because narrow things. He could stack the things, but the narrow, the, I think it was like a, was it a narrow beam? Yeah, opinion? it was a narrow beam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has got the bigger feet for that. I feel yeah. it wasn't wasn't going to win. I, I knew one of the girls would for sure win that. <clears throat> Yeah. Just based on reward- agility. Yeah. So the reward was a night away at the Survivor's Spa. And I mean, that was a great reward. Who would who wouldn't want that after being in the out in the in, in the island for all that time? The first thing I thought of was um flashback to Shawnee seasons where she mm-hmm. desperately wanted to go to the spa and like I was so sad to see that she wasn't here for the reward because that's like one of her ones she's been wanting to go on so Aww. rip to Shawnee not being there to go to this reward but you know what's the next best thing we can get your your friend goes Liz who Liz. wins Liz wins um, the immunity challenge I don't think I nope, I didn't put that up. But Liz wins. I didn't make a banner for that. Sorry, but Liz Liz. wins. (laughs) And so she decides to take George and Nina with her on the um the spa. So my initial thoughts on this when I was watching is yes, she takes the wait, have we talked about George and George and Nina go, right? But like you do a three to versus four who three people are going to be at you leave a majority at camp so i'm like yes wanting to take liz with you or george with you but how dangerous is that to leave a majority back at camp that was my first question because this rewards great at a time but also it's it's could be scary you could have a coup against you like i don't know that's my first thought but like 
they go Nina, Liz, and George go and eat like brownies together and like shave their legs together. I'm like, wow, that's bonding. Right. I mean, <laughs> those who shave their legs together stay together, right? Exactly. Right. Like that seems pretty close, <laughs> close bonding to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I mean, what? yeah, I, I do. I think, but I think I I I, I agree with your. That's dangerous. Uh, to leave them but I also was like but it makes sense to take the, those two because now they know about Haley mm. and they need to make sure that they can come up with a plan and what's the best way to come up with a plan without no interruptions is to take the two people you need to talk to the most and then you could just you know get the plan going back when you get back to camp but you got to come up with the perfect plan Exactly. To make sure, because Haley is a smart player, and if she, if the plan is not rock solid, mm-hmm. she can sniff it out and, you know, and be like, hmm. Which like, foot. do you think? So, well, it was Liz who's picking, so I'm like, did Haley have any red flags? She wasn't picked. I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I so. mean, I don't know because when Liz said, "I'm gonna take one of the girlies." And she picked Nina, and she's like, "I'm sorry, Haley." And I'm like, "Oh, I don't know." And I, well, I mean, I don't think it pans out to much during that because it doesn't look like they talked about much at camp life from what we saw. Right. Uh, so they're fine. They didn't take like Liz takes or no Liz. No, Liz didn't take that. That was a different episode. I'm thinking of. Um, you know, I, I think they just hang out. They're like, mm, "It's fine." The the boys and Haley are like, "It's fine." We're going to see what happens at immunity while right. Liz and George and Nina are in the jacuzzi talking about how they should bring back a cucumber to Simon and have a cucumber idol. <laughs> <laughs> Another clown on Simon moment, which they are just packing in. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. I was like, wait, not that. <laughs> not them go bring back a cucumber and say, here, Simon, we have an idol. <laughs> like, <laughs> hilarious but they also come up with the jacuzzi alliance while they're in there and talking about which is the three alliance between the three of them and they agree to take each other to the end that's what they agreed to um and so they were like the plan is to eliminate Haley unless she gets immunity then it'll be simon if Simon, oh you know and so if Haley doesn't have so immunity forth. Right, blah blah blah. Exactly, which I guess makes sense if they have the ma- if they they know Matt or Jerry will vote with with them. Of course, yeah, Jerry is vote with George. Worried. Yeah, they know they don't. They're not worried about George. Uh, Jerry. That's one thing that I'm just like, uh, it's just uh, right. It makes me roll my eyes because, like, I get it, Jerry. Jerry is like, I'm sticking to the horse that got me here. I'm not changing. I'm not deviating. But like. You, he not even trying to be flexible at all. I at was all. like, I would never waste my breath to talk to Jerry if I was in that game. It's like, no. for what? Because for he's what? non-flexible. And he's for not. me, I need a player who's a little flexible. Mm-hmm. Like, because if we want to change our mind about some things, I don't need you to be like, to no. Be in, no, we need to just stick with what we got. Like, ugh. And you only listen to one person, like, it, it, it is frustrating. It's very frustrating, frustrating to watch. When you have to watch like a player like Simon who's had to consistently flip and flop and go this and that way to even save, like to have another breath in the game. Whereas Jerry's literally just at a chair. People come up to camp on his chair and ask him what he thinks. And he says, well, this is what I've been told. Oh, it's frustrating. And I will continue to talk about that as we go on this week and next mm-hmm. week. And the mm-hmm. following week, surely. Mm-hmm. Surely, clearly. <laughs> oh, so gosh. We go back to camp, and they're, they're still talking about, you know, the eating rice and the left behind, you know. they propo- Simon is trying with Jerry and with Matt and with Haley, quote-unquote Haley, because he know he already got Haley. But he's trying to give them, like, Get them to vote for George. He's like, this is, might be the time. This is the opportunity for you to step out of the shadows of George. And Haley is like, are you crazy? 
stop talking. Don't do that right now. Um, she's like, you, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. This is this is not the right time to do it. And Simon's like, well, if it's not now, when is? When, right. When, when are we supposed to do this? We got to do it at some point. But Simon is getting to a point of desperation. And I understand why he feels like he needs to get to this point. Because not only does he feel desperate, he starts doing things that's desperate. He took out the rice and dumped it out. Half of the rice. And, and when I saw was, him walk in with that rice, what I thought is if there's any of international friends watching from other franchise, uh, Chappies in his season literally would take rice, take the pot, take the water, find some seafood and like cook it in the middle of the night and eat it himself by himself. So I thought for sure we were going to see Simon do a Chappies, but Simon pill picks a, is it Jatia who dumps the rice on the fire? A Jatia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pull, pulls a Jatia instead, which valid. I get it. I, I, I'm not. Look, when you are at that point where you just have nobody and nobody's listening, you have no social capital at all. You have to do what you have to do. Mm-hmm. And I don't blame him for doing that, for getting to that point. And like, I guess he was like, he wanted to famish everybody else. He ate all the papaya. He ate a lot of coconut. He said he wanted to make sure by the challenge they were hungry and starving, and he was full. So, which fair because you know he's a bigger boy. He needs to feed mm-hmm. those muscles, and the people who have um, um, Matt, who's there with him, who mm-hmm. he, he has the chance. That, that's basically who. Um, I, I, I get it. We see people mm-hmm. sneak through people's backpacks. We see people lie. So I'm I'm not I'm not opposed to him doing what needs to get him to get one step further. I, Me I'm, I know I'm, I'm not, sure people online don't like it, but I don't care. I don't, I, I didn't see. I, I think all is fair in love and war, and all is fair in the survivor. You have to do what you have to do, and we'll see that coming up into this next challenge where people do what they have to do in order to get the, try to get the results that they want to get. Um, should we get into that challenge? Is there anything? Yes, else? let's get yeah, into let's the challenge. Into it was it. <laughs> the um, fire and rain challenge, is what they called it, um, where you have to make fire in a drum, and then once you made the fire, you have to go get water in the bucket that has holes in it. And you have to run this bucket from the water and pour it in a drum, which also has holes in it. And try to get the drum that you made the fire in to go up to a flag and burn through this flag. So you first had to make a fire that was going to be steady enough and high enough to hold. And then while you're running back and forth, pouring water in, you had to make sure you had enough water to keep that drum up to burn the flag. And I think that was interesting. We've seen uh, elements of this one without the one having to, like, I think mm-hmm. it's a combining of ones. And I loved it. It was so good. I loved it. So I good. loved that. I was like, oh, this is so good. Because and, it, it shows uh, skills you need to have in Survivor on day 40. That, if you that, have, is, oh, that is what I'm saying. I don't understand. It's certain things you should know about shows before you go on shows, Right. For Amazing Race, you need to learn how to drive stick. And you need to learn how to read a map. For Big Brother, you need to learn how to talk to people in a social manner in that house and not get crazy. On Survivor, you just need to know how to make fire. You should know how to make fire. That is one thing. If you're going to... I I wouldn't even put an application in on Survivor until I knew how to make fire. Like... You should just know how to make fire. And it, it was so crazy because both all Liz, Nina, and Haley were like, oh, we never made fire. And George was like, never made fire before. And I'm like, I'm like, how? How? Day 40 and no, y'all never made fire? Crazy. Crazy. Like, you don't deserve to be there, in my opinion. You, it's, it's basic skills. 
is it's, it's the one thing you should just know how to do. You just, you should, you should just know how to do it. Like, I don't, I would never play Survivor, but if I ever decided I want to do Survivor, first thing I'm doing is going to learn how to make fire. Because you just never know when you go need that. Because it could come up in a challenge, as they see, as we saw here. If you make it to the final four and they do that fire making challenge thing and you have to, I don't want to be caught out without knowing how to make fire. Now, even if I don't ever make fire at camp, I will, and I want people to think I don't know how to make fire. Sure. But when it comes down to that final four challenge, I'll be like, got it. Exactly. <laughs> I know how to make fire. Exactly. Like, <clears throat> like, even if you're not great at it, at least know the potential, to, like, so you can eventually get it. Cause after it took a little bit of while for them to get it built up to where they need to be. You you had a chance if you could scrape magnesium, get a pile, get that spark. Like even I feel like girl, I, I'm sitting here on my couch saying, I can do it, but I like probably do probably it. Could, yeah. Right. Like I have at least an understanding of it. I, whereas like George Lewis uh -oh. sat there, didn't even is try. It is it me? Oh, uh, I think it's you. Oh, it's probably me. Oh, you're back. You're <laughs> okay, back. <laughs> like pretend. Make it look right. like you just sit there. Oh, Lord. Lord. It was crazy. But um, so during the challenge, we see Matt makes his fire first and he's off running, getting water. Then Simon makes his fire and he runs off to get water. And they're do they're going back and forth. Matt's fire is pretty steady. Simon's fire is pretty steady. And so halfway through, Liz looks at Nina and is like, should I just go help Matt? And Nina was like, yeah. And so she abandons her fire and runs and starts getting water to help Matt, which with this is within the rules. Like I said, when you get to a situation, you have to do what you have to do. All's fair in Love and Survivor. And it was fine. It was a fair thing to do. It was a smart thing to do if that's if you're trying to get. Exactly. And JLP's like, it's in the rules. That's fine. Right. I'm not mad you know, about it. Do it. Not mad about it. You don't have to make your fire. You can help somebody else. It's fine. Right. And I think they did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Not soon enough, though, I'd say. Yeah, I think not soon Liz enough. Liz needed to get in there faster so he could have. Because it was seconds away between seconds. Liz and Matt for Matt's fire and Simon. Mm -hmm. One man banding to get a win. I'm so proud of my boy, Simon. <gasps> <gasps> Went against two people, got his fire started, big enough, strong enough, caught the water. That extra rice paid off. <laughs> that extra rice paid off, and then papayas, they all paid off. <laughs> he I was full. So happy of him. Like, oh, it's it's so good. So good. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, the two against one thing. Like, I think I messaged him after. I was like, you did it against two people. It's like, isn't that wild? Isn't that crazy? Isn't but that I showed crazy? him I wanted it more. Period. And, and, uh, and did. it was and just did. A, it was it was good. And he did that. So Simon wins. And so they go into the plan of Haley gotta go. And it's an interesting scramble because George is trying to keep Haley blindsided, basically. Like so he's like, no, nah, no, nah, we're good. Um yep. same plan. No, let's, let's Nina gotta it. go. Um, who do they they say to Haley? It's a split between Liz and Nina. Liz and Nina. Mm -hmm. And Nina's doing an Oscar performing winner. And of, oh, is this an idol? Is this an idol? Is that an idol? <laughs> like she's searching. Like, that, that's her goal like, for the day. You know what? I have nothing else to lose. I'm gonna lo look for the idol. I guess. When in reality, we know. She's not going anywhere. She's not going she anywhere. She's fine. She's <laughs> fine. But like hey, Haley buys it, the hook line and sinker. That's uh but then you know the real plan, George, Liz, Nina, and Jerry, those are the four. Uh they're gonna they're gonna tell them we're gonna or no, they're telling Haley the the plan is Matt and Jerry go and Liz, Jerry Haley, Liz go and Nina. That's not the plan. Um, but the crazy part is they don't even tell Matt the no. real plan. Which, because George does not trust Matt because Matt did not tell George about 
the um that he knew about the sixty thousand dollars and that he heard it from Haley. So George does not fully trust Matt. And so he was not going to tell him the whole plan. He told him, You're gonna vote out Nina. And he's like, Okay, bad. Sounds good. Great. I mean, what else do we have to do? That's that's been the plan. That's going to be the plan. Right. Um it's so interesting to me though that there is a chance, a possibility, depending on what Nina decides to do, that they could maybe vote out George. Mm-hmm. Haley's like, hey bestie, you know, you see George, he's running the show. You see, you see him, you see him, you know, doing it. You me Simon, let's go. Let's let's do it. Let's vote out George. And they're like I feel like that would have been a great opportunity to do it. <sighs> Literally. But I understand why Nina it's was happening. going back and forth and like who would be the better option at this point? I think she sees the agency that Liz George have versus where Haley and Simon are literally at the bottom of the barrel. Scraping, right. Scraping. Crying. Scrapping. They're off. Like, I think Nina sees it writing on the walls, but I think she considers both the options because she's yeah. not a smart girl. That's what? Flexible. What? Looking at you, Jerry. Um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh gosh, she's the worst. Um, but like you know, n- not the worst. Just I wish he could consider some thoughts. <laughs> okay. So should we go to tribal council? I think we've covered everything. Uh, they walk in. Yeah. <laughs> they they do so, it. They're they're a tribal quest. Uh, tribal council and JP is questioning the narrative that is Nina going home and that she and everyone knows it and she plays that part perfectly she's like yeah it's you know it is what it is I don't really know what else could be said i we saw the vote last week. We know where I, I was going, and now I have no one. So um, I fought with George the entire time at the spa about my vote, and eh. nothing. Nothing. I, I got nothing. Nothing happened to ALP. I don't know. And they all do their parts so well in this. It's very well. This was an Oscar war, uh, Oscar worthy performance from everybody. I feel. So good. It's so good that we get a blindside out of it. Not we. We <laughs> see it coming. That player who gets blindsided gets blindsided. And we love that. We love it. They. It was It was amazing to see the vote happen. And yeah. Haley had no idea. <laughs> no. And the breakdown. It was George, Liz, Nina, Jerry voted for Haley. Mm-hmm. Haley follows George George's plan and votes for Nina. Simon who tells George to go back to uh, Bankstown and be the village idiot, I think is the line. I don't know. That could be a different one. George, uh, Simon's very happy to vote for George again, uh, which he will. No, know. uh, Haley votes for George as well. Oh, uh, does she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, just didn't get a Nina vote in there. Nina, Nina does says no, nah, not today. Oh, uh, Matt votes for Nina. Oh, Yes. Yes. Okay. That's very fair. And Matt does that to repay Liz for uh mm-hmm. for the challenge. That makes sense. Um, but you know, you can't have a better sport than Haley. Haley says, You got me, gals. You got I me, was gal. expected to be <laughs> way earlier. You got me. Woo! Like, Good play. Like, like oof, she goes, I wanted to coming. be blindsided, and then I got it. Like she's she's a class act. Yeah. Last act, like so good. It's yeah, she, wild she, to me. She, she played it very well, and uh, she was like, "Oh no, was it seven two? Never mind. I don't know. I might be wrong. Oh, uh, <laughs> could be wrong. You got go back and check the tapes. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was a perfectly executed plan. And Matt was like, "Oh wow, good job, Nina." And she was like, "Thanks." She goes, thanks. Keep me around. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, but like, 
I know Nina was like, Haley, throw me under the bus. Got to throw you under the bus. I'm going to throw you out of here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> out of the bus, uh, out of town. Yeah. Out of town, pretty much. <laughs> so, yeah, that was that. That was um, that was episode uh, ni- 19. So we're going to go to episode 20 now. Yes, the second of the week. We go to two episodes a week, which is so great. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so great. Yes. I, I love when we go down to two episodes a week. It's like, whew, great. It's a little less content, but like mm. still enough content to quench the thirst, you know? Yes. This is the episode we watched together, Ashley. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it is sure. Or is it? Is it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm, is it? Because we watched nope, the one. Nope. 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 nope, nope, nope that's nope, next week. Yet. I was next like, because this one is. This is the. Oh, yes. This, this is our is little with, fluff. Of yeah, we have a little fluff piece. But, you know, I next, guess we'll talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one, I, I think it's a lot of relationship building and a lot of cracks that we've seen the last couple of episodes really come to form. I think that's kind of what this episode builds up to. Uh, and a really interesting challenge. That looks awful and painful. Um, yeah. But we come back after Haley's tribal where we no longer have a winner on the, in the game. At, at final, final what? Six? Six? six, six seven? Final six, seven. 40 days in, we don't have a winner on the game, which amazing crazy so it's uh, you know a little solemn obviously but what do you do uh why is this not showing um sorry i'm sending a friend a code who's using my <laughs> oh, okay. uh, wants to play my sims i get it <laughs> um, <laughs> no i mean so they're obviously a little sad george is like that's my real bestie who's gone but Real bestie wasn't helping me, so she had to go. And now he's the king. Alone. The, the royalty on the beach. like mm-hmm, Period. <laughs> Which, but his nemesis, Simon, is still alive. And he's and mad. he does not like that. Because Simon just wrote his name down for like the fifth time this season. <laughs> and he's like, come on, Simon. Come on. Really? So Simon is at this point is trying to do anything and everything to get people on his side and it's just falling on deaf ears. Nobody's listening. He had a conversation with Matt and basically called Matt a pawn, George's pawn and Matt did not appreciate that. And then he turned around and did the same thing to Jerry and Jerry did not appreciate that. And then he had a conversation with Liz and Liz was like, why are you talking about me behind my back? And he's calling me a pawn for George. And he's like, I didn't say anything that I wouldn't tell you to your face. And I just did. (laughs) And I I just saying you're a pawn. And she's like, I don't want to talk about it. And she walks away. I'm like, didn't you ask him to tell you to your face? And then when he does, you don't want to talk about it. And my my issue with this is I get getting upset, getting emotional, but mm-hmm. this is what Simon sees from his perspective. Perspective, exactly. You can't be mad at him for viewing this as how it's going. If it's not the case, that's fine. But that's his perspective as someone who's playing from the bottom. And this is mm-hmm. what, the, what the game views. If you're looking at a chessboard, that's what it's looked like. You're protecting the king. The mm-hmm. queen has just gone out. You have a bunch of pawns around. Simon's an analytical guy. He that's how he's thinking. He didn't mean to hurt your feelings. He's just showing what his perspective in the game is. I I, I was like, girl, you'll need to, y'all need to calm down and maybe look in the mirror and think, is that my game I'm playing? And if it is, should I change it? And the answer is yes, you should. Yes, you should because that is. I mean, but this is a thing. He's not wrong. Simon is not wrong at what he's seeing because that is what we're seeing as a viewer. And we're seeing the whole picture. Exactly. And that is what it is. It was like, sure, George is allowing you all to give input and make you believe that this is a group 
decision that we're making. But every move that you made is to adv- is more to advance his game. He's just letting you come up with the suggestions, and he's like, yeah, yeah, good idea. That was the idea that I already had. We all do it in life where we have people who we like, I'll let them believe they're making the, suge- the idea, but it's really going to be my idea. Mm-hmm. It, exactly. it, it just, it is what it is. And I'm like, I get why they're mad because they don't feel like that's what it is. But honestly, that's what it is. Uh, Sorry to tell it. you. Exactly. Sorry to break it to you, but you are his pawns and he is playing you like a puppet. It is. The puppet, the fiddle, he the, whatever thing you want to play, he playing it. He's a master of all plays right now because y'all are letting him. Yes. And nobody wants to take the shot. And then the people who do want to take the shot are getting a opposition at every turn. It's just it's it, it's <sighs> frustrating to watch because like this end game really is turning into a side with shields versus and people are just getting picked off. It's mm-hmm. very it's, frustrating. It's, it is frustrating. It's 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 like wow. Okay. I want a little dynamic change. Just a little. But, and 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 this is not me going after George and wanting George gone. This is just it's just getting to the point where everything they do is for him. And it's like, there is no, like you said, no dynamic, no power shifts or nothing. It's always falling on one side. And it's very much a steamroll at this point. And it's just like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Of, I'm, uh, but good on them. Good on him. Good on George for setting himself in that position where everybody's just going to protect him. And yes, again, we don't love George, but like he is playing well to the fact where he has these people thinking that they're not playing for the benefit of his game of their own. But in reality, it's benefiting George so much, which I mean, I can also counteract that. We'll talk about it in, the, in the next two episodes of maybe why we can counteract that. But right now in this moment, when Simon is calling them pawns, I feel that I get that because like, they aren't actively having any conversation or strategy or anything to show us or prove us wrong. So at this mm-hmm. point, I'm Team Simon's correct, which I always right. say. But uh, in this moment, a little more. Right. And so I, Matt, I'm a pawn too, so don't worry. I, I, I pointed I've, it out. I've been pawns before. I've been mm-hmm. a pawn. It's oh, okay. 100%. Like, it's fine sometimes. It's okay you, get to to the, you can be a pawn, get to the end, and cut your king. That's how Done you do Done that. Been there. You won a won game that way. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> uh, look, won a game that way. I was upon the entire way through, and I knew it. And I was like, oh. "You said I will regain my power at the end." At the end, just a minute. Give Give me a second. Give me a second. And the one who was running the shots at the very end, and it was like, "So maybe pawns are a good thing." Don't get emotional because there's a word that seems to be negative. It could be positive. Make it could better. Be. Period. <laughs> Period. Uh, anyways. But, <laughs> I'm so mad at them. It's, 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 it's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. But Matt gets Matt gets a little emotional because he realizes that he hasn't made any big moves and he doesn't know. He's feeling a little pressure to build up his resume. And, you know, he's just like, uh, maybe this might be the time to get George. But he's just asking Simon and Matt not to betray him by throwing George's name out. He's just, just, you know, we'll see. We'll we'll talk about it. It could happen. But he wasn't sure. He just felt emotional about, he's thinking about his resume. And I get that too. It's like, you because you need to think about it at some point. And final six is a great point to start thinking about. Great time what have I done in this game? <laughs> what have I done? How can right. I make it look like I've done more? It's a great time to start thinking about it. I get it. Oh, man. But- <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the immunity challenge, just the immunity challenge, I thought was just meh. 
<laughs> not what it was. Eh. It's very Australian Survivor. Stand on yep. a peg and Stand hold on something and hold it. Hold it. It, it, I'm, I'm impressed at how long they go, I guess, because like my my feet hurt just looking at those pegs. Child, please, the way my feet are set up, baby, I wouldn't even got on the peg. I was like, like, no, thank you. Delphi, I need help down right now. You're like, you haven't started. Yeah, I need help. Just come come carry me. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> That's all this. I'm getting out of this challenge because I will not. No, I can do it. But and the fact it comes down to to Jerry, Jerry, Jerry and Matt. After Jerry what, and Matt. After like, like an hour, and we're like, we're bored. Let's take one foot off. And Jerry's got a bum ankle, so I was like, of course Matt's gonna win, which makes sense from having a crying confessional to winning a, a, an immunity. It just made sense. sense. Sure enough. Sure enough. Sure enough. It, but, yeah. Not much else to take from it. Like, no, it really was. It was just a. On this, on all the immunity challenges, it was a mid it challenge. It wasn't anything for me. original. <laughs> no. Nor, nor, nor. So back at camp, George remarks that Simon is still in the game out of sheer luck, and which has run its course while also saying that Simon's torch will get snuffed. Just like as Simon's hat says. The hat snuff oh, came my hat's out. In my car. Uh, that is your hat. <laughs> It's in the car. Uh, no, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, I'd like to counteract that and say, luck, girl, he practiced. He did the work at home. Much like we talked about practicing fire, he practiced puzzles. He practiced agility. He practiced balancing. He practiced puzzles. Like, don't tell me it's luck because, yes, luck's an element, but he also put the work in. He's been lucky to survive, sure, but he's got to win the last few immunities based on skill, not luck. Thank you. Next. <laughs> oh, I meant to put that up. Oh, well, sorry. I'll do it now. Oh, and it is a rare, But like, you know, like Simon, you, you can say he's lucky. Yes, sure. Element. But he's had to flip. He's had to flop. He's had to go to the power. He might have voted incorrectly, but it's never been for him who's gone out. So call it luck, sure. But he's also been navigating and putting in the agency and the time to do it. Okay, we're done. <laughs> but he also won things. You can't say it's luck when somebody's winning things. So... Looks eh. for the rest of the cast who isn't winning anything, right? Lord, <laughs> uh, George, and, and still continues to not win anything, but that's just his MO, right? It's, it's interesting, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I don't know. Like, so they say Simon, but that's not that's not exactly what, what George is thinking of just having Simon. He says, hey, bestie, should we should we split the vote at final six? Because why not? How right. about we split between, you know, Simon and Nina? And Liz tells Nina they're splitting between Simon and Jerry. And they're like, well, well, maybe, maybe we need to be careful if there's an idol play. Maybe, so George tells Liz, maybe we need to make sure Nina goes home then, just in case there's an idol play. Mm -hmm. Sneaky snake. What mm -hmm. about the jacuzzi alliance? Yeah, alliance. I mean, and <laughs> Liz was Liz was also happy to be like, yeah, sure. I'm like, what happened to the jacuzzis? Right. If you're gonna make what? an alliance, at least pretend. Like, right. Just to say, I want to work with you in this vote instead of making an alliance. Like, what's the point if you're just gonna turn immediately, so, Lord? Yeah. For what? For what? For what? Jury management besties, come on. <laughs> I'm fired up. This spicy ramen really put it put a fire there. <laughs> but it's okay. It, uh, we need we need firing up because this is crazy. But Simon's only silver lining is Matt. And as the person who wins immunity, he hopes Matt is willing to make a move against George. Well, Matt says he's still on board. Simon still wants to protect himself 
in case of another fake plan. And I get it, Simon. I know Simon is sick of fake plans. I know he's sick of it. Fake a, a lot of fake things this season for Simon. And uh-huh, I need uh-huh. them to be real. They need something to be real. Um, Nina and Simon agree that they don't trust Matt to uphold his word, but this could be their last shot to slay the king. And when George confronts this co- conversation about Ah, when George confronts Nina about the conversation with Simon, she slips in front of Matt and says she told Simon she was voting for Jerry. And we I'm know sorry. Matt and Jerry are besties. Besties. <laughs> so I'm like, oh. Not good. So that slip up made Matt decide or start thinking like, uh, maybe. I don't know why that conversation, that made him think like, they're not, be, I don't know, because she was in front of George. She couldn't literally tell George, I'm voting for you. Right. And like, I guess maybe she should have said, Liz? 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 That'd be, that'd be the only other option that wouldn't piss any of them off there. But, well, it might make, I don't know, George would know she's lying and be like, but why didn't... I, I, it is. It was a hard situation for Nina, but like, ugh, I don't think she realized how big of a red flag she set off just in that moment. Yeah, very. And much. I, I, I still don't understand why that was the red flag, but sure, sure go we're going with it, right? Exactly. Weird, weirder things have been said on the show. Who knows? Right. It is what it is. So, um, it, we go to trial because Matt is being Matt. Um, <laughs> JV, JLP asks Simon if he's in danger without immunity, and Simon says he is. When asked how his vote is going, George says that the upcoming vote will be the parting of the seas, which will uncover the road to the Holy Land. JLP says, let's ask more about that, because we love what <laughs> we met <it> for. <laughs> um, Simon says, girl, I don't got eyes right now. I can't see what path we're going on. Like, like, I don't know. And Nina, like, it's foggy ahead for me, so I don't Matt, know. And Matt says, I hope I have the right map I'm looking at. I don't know what path I'm going on. I'm like, like I'm sick of these metaphors, honestly. No. <laughs> no, I mean, honestly, like, girl, make the riddles less riddly, please. Right, please. Which so, I think yeah. this the conversations are interesting though because like Simon and Nina are going to try to work together on this, but I think Simon sees the writing on the wall with some of the body language, mm-hmm. perhaps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like whispering to Nina, like they go slow, to, they go split the vote between us, and um, Nina's like. They're the best person win, I guess. I don't know what to say because like. If it's between us, what do we do? We don't have any numbers. So it is what it is. Um, and so Simon pledges to Matt one last time to vote with him and Nina. And George tells Liz that he thinks Matt is out. He's like, Matt's gone. He's working with Nina and Simon. And at the last minute, he decides to change his. He was like, let's change our vote to Nina. Just to protect ourselves. So all of us will vote for Nina. And so. Well, all of them do vote for Nina, except one person, which we will be shocked to find. Who votes for Jerry? Who votes for Jerry? <gasps> um, Nina. <laughs> oh, right. Duh. Exactly. What? Because she can't vote for, for herself. herself. Exactly. Literally everyone, a five to one. But. But, she's not going home. She's not going home because this is Australian Survivor. We have non-elimination rounds, besties, and we knew it was coming. One of these two episodes, we knew it was coming, and we just didn't know which one. We knew it. Uh, it's uh, JLP says, hey, besties, no one's going home this round, but you're going to go no. into Survivor isolation, which I like to call Survivor timeout. Um, right. <laughs> because it's literally a timeout. Um, they have 24 hours where... Nina and her new best friend Jerry get to sit in this little timeout circle mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. they gotta wait on Simon, Liz, George, and Matt, and uh, uh yeah, That's them. 
and besties to come bring food, water, and information. They mm-hmm. decide if, if you get that or not. Um, and they won't they won't be at the next immunity challenge. Nope. So no chance of an immunity. Good luck, besties in isolation, JLP says. Get the heck out. <laughs> That's and- it. See you see you next time if you make it. We'll see. We'll, we'll see you the next tribal because I won't see you at the immunity. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was yeah. like, oh, well, okay. A lot it's of a information for an episode that did nothing in the end. <laughs> nothing. 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 Absolutely nothing in the end. Could, could have skipped. You know, but we didn't. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't skip. We watched. And now we're going to jump right into where it is an elimination round because somebody has to go home. We can't keep everybody there and forever. So. Right. This is not RuPaul's best friend race. Right. We, we're, we're voting people out of this. Let's hope. We, we, somebody got to go. And this is the episode that I watched with Ashley. Oh, yes. And it yes. was. And and it was. It. I, and I apparently, unfortunately, saw Ashley in a very, very not happy sad time. state. <laughs> sad, sad state. And I was there with her. I did not like it at all. But we, we had a group of people that I got to rally around the troops of loving Simon and not loving George for that hour, even if they aren't watching. I'm like, we're Team Simon. Don't don't tell anyone else differently, okay? Right. <laughs> we had a B and B in behind us. <laughs> Right. Oh, no, so I mean, it was a fun episode nonetheless um, to watch because we had a really cool challenge. We had a fun little twist and mm-hmm, a vote. So let's jump right in there. Yeah. Would you like to start us off, Ashley, talking about this? Yeah. Episode? We get back and it's a beautiful dark night, and Nina and Jerry go find their cage. The rules are simple. They can't leave the cage and tell tribal. So they're at the mercy of the other four besties to get that food, water information. But that's plenty of info to be shared within the pen itself. Because Nina says, yo, Jerry, let me tell you about George's game. You you don't know everything about it. Learns that George has a final three all over the place between Liz and Nina and him, him, Matt, and Jerry. And how he's betrayed Shawnee Haley. Jerry realizes that George is a wildly big threat in that game. And Nina says, let's talk about why you shouldn't work with him. And to my ears, I loved it. I <laughs> loved it. <laughs> I, I, I loved every second of that. I was like, do it, Nina. Tell him everything. everything. What do you have to lose? They were what? ready to fling you. And Linda's like, and guess where I got your name from? Liz and George told me to vote for you. It wasn't just I just came up with that out the blue. That's who they said I needed to vote for. That was the plan. I voted for you. They'll vote for uh, Simon? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Something like yeah. that. Something like that. Yeah, they were going to vote for Simon. And... Yeah, everybody else go vote for Simon, and I vote for you. And that way, he feels time. like your game is disposable to him because if I they didn't know who had an idol, and if the other person had an idol, you were gonna go home. Sorry, gal. Hmm. You're at the bottom of the barrel of your alliance. How does that make you feel? Is basically what Nina's asking. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty and, much. And Jerry, I and think, it was does some thinking, but. That doesn't stop our besties to come talk to them, though. Of um, course which, not. The first one, which I think was an interesting conversation, was Simon saying, Hey, besties, it's late night. Um, Simon comes and says, should, 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 we, should we try to get rid of George again? Um, again? Again. It, it seems to be the time, maybe. But if you know one thing about George... From this season or last, uh, his last season, you know he's always lurking in a bush, on the floor, like a little snake, in the darkness. This mm-hmm. this bad boy is listening to this whole conversation go down. George, here's Simon Pitch's name. Um, and it realizes that he's been caught 
in between two alliances, and now he needs to figure out where, what do I do? Because Jerry is mad, Nina's mm -hmm. desperate, and George doesn't want a loyal ally to slip away so easily. Mm -hmm. So what does George do? In the depths of the morning, we see him carrying this comfortable chair into <laughs> the little circle, which is hilarious, where he just, like, tries to, like, quietly put it in there, and it's, like, the most awkward thing, where George, like, brings Jerry his chair. Jerry, I will be your, your savior. I'll help you. I'll, I'll get you this comfortable, comfortable seating to try to, you know, be good, apologize for the stray vote, and... He's trying to have Matt help explain his strategy. So it's not George saying, this is what I did. Matt does it because he knows Jerry and Matt have a much stronger relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So And Nina, Nina was like, and Nina sees that. And she's like, you see what's happening, George, right? Uh, Jerry, right? He's having Matt do it because he knows you're closer to Matt and not him owning up to his faults. He's trying to make Matt give all the strategy and show why this is happening because he wants you to be okay. He's pacifying you into believing that this wasn't his doing. It was just, um, he panicked. It was the last minute panic. He didn't. It wasn't yeah. calculated. It wasn't something I wanted. It just did. I'm sorry. Ugh. Lord. It was, it was like, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll see who we really believe. All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, that was really it. Uh, that was it. Really happened with that. A lot of just talking, bringing, trying to make Jerry feel comfortable, and um, yeah. So the immunity challenge was the um, twist on a domino stacking challenge. They had them in a circle thing with things, tension ropes to hold the thing. And so you had to stack the dominoes in a circle to the point close enough where they could fall and do a whole domino effect. But the thing, the twist of the circle, you had to move this thing around to set up your... <laughs> your blocks and you only had a set number of blocks so you had to make them the perfect um you couldn't put them too close or you would run out of you have all the space in between or you didn't want to too far or they wouldn't have a de the domino effect happen and you had to be careful not to twist it too far or let it go where it falls and collapse before you want it to so it was a really cool uh, addition to a really classic, you know, mm -hmm. stack the thing and make it fall down, making it a circle cool, making it like bouncy cool, making it like that's why I love Australian survivor challenges. Um, they they always try to find a way to elevate them a little bit, which is really cool because they because challenges are boring to watch most of the times, but they make Sometimes. them fun, yeah, and they do. This challenge. You saw me. You saw me in this challenge where it stressed me the hell out. This challenge was so close. Like literally, if we like we talked about with the last challenge with the fire, how close it was between Matt and Simon. This was even closer between Matt and Simon. And Simon got away with it the last time. And this time he did not because Matt ended up pulling it off by mere seconds. And I really feel like if Simon didn't take that long to untwist it and just knocked it over, he would have won. Yeah. And because he goes, let's just try it on after Matt doesn't like, and it works. So I'm like, for me being, knowing the results of this episode, it kills me to know had he just done one thing differently, he could have yeah. won this one again. And, oh, that for it was devastating but i know i know it's uh it's a great great thing for him to know he could have done it but and he's proud of his work and knowing that way anyways matt has to be out of the world water happy like that he's able to win is this his first immunity he wins no he's he's won three 
Oh, it's three. his third one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> this is nothing. He has to be very happy that no, that our plan. Granted, and if there's an I a hidden idol, our plan probably can go through tonight. So mm -hmm. he's probably over the moon. But there's also, you know, that sneaky snaky thing in the back of his head. Could I do a flip? Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, um, gosh, it's 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 it ugh. Yikes! It was sad immunity to watch. Um, what happens back at camp, though? Let's George see. is calling the shots, and he's arguing that for he argues for a split a split vote, and basically repeating what should have happened at the last vote. He and Liz vote for Simon. Matt and Jerry vote for Nina, and Nina and Simon can't wield any power. As for which of the two is his true target? He weighs his options. He says Nina is a bigger strategic threat and more likely to win a jury vote with how many heroes are on the jury. And But Simon has been his nemesis from the very beginning and could easily win out in challenges to foil the endgame plans. So to keep the insurance policy in place, he needs to guarantee Jerry's on board. Nina's rightfully points out that George is using Matt as a mouthpiece to present the info as a sneaky manipulation tactic. And Jerry seems to understand where she's coming from. The trust with George is broken. The King's cars have been revealed. And it sounds like a perfect time for revenge. And finally, someone's seeing that George is a master manipulator. Like, finally, someone said it. Because that's what he's been doing all season. So Nina just needs to push to the right people. How do you not see that? But I right. think at the same time, the people who she has pushed to also have to weigh, can I allow Simon to stay in the game and potentially win out to the end? That's a big, big That's threat. Thing. I think, too. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a compliment to Simon's game where like, you have to get out. You're a big threat. Whereas people are saying he's a goat, this or that. No, he's a threat. So like, I see, I see both sides for the middle. I mm -hmm. carry Matt of, what what side am I flipping to? Maybe they're starting to maybe be flexible. There's a thought in their head they might flip away from who what they know. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't hold my breath too strong about that thought. But <laughs> I um, mean, it, George does make a last ditch effort with Jerry, and to win Jerry back with Nina in earshot, he walks over to the playpen and gives Jerry something to think about, and he's like, "Jerry's my number one." And he gets third place to Matt and Jerry after such an incredible game. So be it. I'm okay with it. It's fine because I trust you and you need to trust me. And we're sticking together to the very end. And nothing will change that. And, you know, yeah, Jerry can't deny that George has been a friend and ally and a mentor this whole game. And is he willing to toss him aside? So Jerry feels he has options to think about right now before going to tribal. Yeah. But it, and it's a good pitch. Uh, I hate to say it, but it, it's a good pitch. It is a good pitch. And um, when we get to tribal council, we see that his pitch worked because Jerry goes on and on and on about how because Simon makes his pitch and he's like you know I said it before I said it again people are playing to protect George and you know pawns are happening and Jerry was like wait hold on you're an athlete uh, right Simon and Simon's like yeah and he's like and you have coaches right he was like yeah he said, do you feel like a coach when you're playing for a coach and they're telling you and instructing you and helping you on how to play the game and learn the game that you're their pawn? And Simon is like, no, they're my coach. He said, exactly. George has been my coach and my mentor. And he is somebody who is teaching me how to play the game. Therefore, I don't feel like he, he's I'm his pawn. I feel like I am learning from him. And he's one of the best teachers 
I've ever had and is and one of the best mentors. And I feel like this is an opportunity for, you know, this has just been a great time. And I am very happy with rolling with George, basically. Which is fine and it's great and it's really sure. I'm sure everyone loved it and it was a great speech. But like for me, it just felt like very condescending to Simon though at the same time to be like, you, you're you telling me I'm wrong and they're not. So that's literally Simon's worldview. You can't be mad on how Simon perceives the game. And I understand that you, you consider George a coach. Someone's guiding you along the game. But like he's guiding you along as the biggest sheep, the biggest sheep, sheep, goat, goat. That year is like if you're not willing to bend and think on your own, he might be a coach or he might just be leading you to slaughter. I, I don't know, it didn't sit with me, it didn't sit with me. They came from my bestie, and I'm I didn't sit with me, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, after all that, Nina was like, It's not happening. <laughs> Simon was like, Yeah, no, it's not happening. And so it went down to a 3-3 vote against Nina and Simon. And then on the re-vote, they all went Simon. And unfortunately, Simon became our sixth juror. But Simon, you might be the sixth juror. You are, in my heart, number one. You went out there, accomplished your goals, your dreams. You did it. You made the jury. You made it far into the jury. And guess what, girl? You got a D-Max coming home to you in your carpenter apprentice lifestyle, which will help you get that once you get into it. Your career is made. You might not get the half mil, but you get a car, which is helpful for your career. You get lifelong memories and friendships. And you did something your childhood dream weren't. You got to play Survivor not once, but twice. And the second time, you did amazing. You won competition after competition. You won immunities when you needed them. You did everything you needed to do. And you fought from the bottom. You weren't sitting prettily. And you had to work. You had to think. So no matter what, we're just so proud of you. And we're so happy that you got to make the jury this time. Yes, I'm in. Yes. We love that. We love that. <sighs> Simon played a great game. I have to say, it was it was messy. It was fl- crazy. It was wild. It was unpredictable, but it was fun the entire way through. And I think that's all that matters. I enjoyed Simon. It's, it was moments where I was like, ah, no, don't, oh, Simon. But then it was moments I'm like, ah. I'll see you, Simon. I see you. So yeah, I I was very happy and I was very sad to see him go. I think he played a great, great game. I was happy yeah. to know that I was around great people when I saw my bestie leave. I got people <laughs> supporting me, supporting me when I was sad. No, so. <laughs> no, it was sad to see him. But he gets to vote. He gets to vote for one of these bad boys. Yeah, to be a winner, yeah. and he's excited. And I'm excited to see who's going to join him in the jury in this next episode. Yeah. So then we'll go into the next episode. And um, sure. Start us off again, Ashley. I feel like yeah. you did such a great job starting us off with the last one. So uh, they're, they're obviously emotional some emotions being sad some being very happy i.e george where he finally got his rival out of the game coming back onto camp it's the final five and they wake up that next morning after simon to see coffee and sugar and cream and (laughs) george doing only the georgiest of george things takes a spoonful of sugar just for fun why not so they are buzzing on caffeine sugar and 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 they're really happy no matter what uh george tells jerry whether i finish fourth third second or even if i win i'm proud of myself either way for getting this far um and and that's kind of a cool little sentiment to make of that far and get a little treat get a little caffeine a little taste of home and Mm -hmm. really reflect on your game of how they're doing and that's what they do in this moment um but in this moment also liz is watching and seeing wow 
Jerry mm. is extremely close to George. Extremely I don't close. love that if I want to be extremely close to George. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, it's like, yeah, Liz is like, I don't know if he'll pick me over George. So, she now has a new set. Um, she wants to, not, not the one you'd expect off of that statement. She says, I think it's time now to get rid of Matt, who can win challenges over me. And I want to be in that position. Which I found to be very smart and strategic of Liz. I was like, yeah, girl, Matt can win out just like Simon could have won out. So why are we keeping him? Exactly. And Liz is like, you know, remember we made that alliance. I hope it's not broken. I hope it's just a little, you know, rough water. Fractured. Fractured. Not broke. Just just a little work. We can come back. So she's like, maybe I need to go talk to Nina about getting rid of Bestie Matt, you know? And Nina says, my mom taught me these words. Anyone but me? Matt, cool. Great. Love it. That's the plan? I'm doing it. Loving it here. (laughs) Exactly. George says, yeah, sure. Cool. Matt, fine. Let's go. Go to that tribal council? Sure. Cool. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of what we get off of their sugar caffeine high buzz of, should we go for Matt? Yeah, let's go for Matt. Yeah, let's go for Matt. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So then they go right to the immunity challenge. Very quickly. And it's like, Liz has her focus on preventing Matt from winning immunity. That's the only thing she wanted to do. She was like, we can't let him win. So this challenge is you grab a ball. First, you drop this ball down the chute. And you have to catch this ball on a platform. And once you... Uh, battle it up, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> exactly. Once you get it on the plate, you have to take this one ball and go through an obstacle and then grab another ball and then go through another obstacle and then get to the last part where you have to put these balls on a puzzle. And you have to raise the puzzle up and not drop the ball through and get a, the ball in each hole. There. That's that's the thing. <laughs> and, Balance and coordination is the name of the game with this one. And, and as you guessed it, George did not do well in this one. He falls on his bum quite a few times, which <laughs> for anyone who loves watching people uh, have a little bit of pain for fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad to see him fall on his ass. <laughs> that's probably why he is being blocked i say i say things like this <laughs> but anyways um we see a dominant person take over in this, in this oh challenge. yeah for sure like for agility sure. balance yeah liz of course duh and nina was the close second nina was right behind her but right. not as close as we like to think but liz was actually like she slayed that she yeah. <laughs> came in eight and she says, I have an idea and I want to do it, so I'm going to win to make sure it happens. Exactly. Period. As you should. Um, yeah, so yeah. we get back to camp. Mm-hmm. And, and um, <laughs> the picture that, that you just it, iconic of Liz licking this machete in front of George, I'm like, she doesn't care. She's a badass. She that, is. Well, that sees to me. Like, oh, it's I was so just funny. like, not that girl. She was like, I was like, you're in a cut Yeah, this tongue. is what I think we should do. Uh, I was I'm like, like oh. Girl. Well. <laughs> I was like, go off. Go um, off. She, so, yeah, you know, memes aside, checks, mm-hmm. uh, we, we see her talking to George, but then George goes talks to one, one of his final threes, Jerry and Matt, and saying, Nina is the one who's going to win at the end if we let her stay in. She's got those jury locked. Naming the jury of who she who he thinks she has right now, which Sam, original hero, Sean, original hero, Flick, original hero, and Simon, who worked extremely close with her, saying she's got those locked. George says Liz is voting with them because she has no choice to do that, Mm -hmm. which good points, valid points, valid points, very valid. And then we. Flip the coin to what's Liz, what is Liz thinking? She's worried that George is still too close to Jerry. She's like, I'm sick of him. He is way too close to Jerry. And 
George is worried that Joe, uh, that Jerry will be cross. If he votes out by it, he don't want to upset Jerry. And Liz is like, why are you worried about this old man and his feelings when we need to make be strategic? She said, I don't need you to be soft. I need you to be strategic. You need to snap out of this foolishness and give me cutthroat George. Where is this coming from where you have to worry about how Jerry's feelings are and how he feels if we vote out Matt? Matt could win. Uh, uh, George, where was that energy when you voted out Shawnee and Haley? Where was that energy? You didn't give two flying anything when you voted out Queen Shawnee and Queen Haley. But now when it's like, oh, no, Jerry's feelings really matter right now. No, girl, if you're going to make the moves, make the moves with your full chest. Right here. Give it all you got. Give it all you got. Final five. What do you have to lose? I mean, if Jerry mad, he mad. But where else he gonna go? He ain't going nowhere. Just like you said, Liz don't have a choice. Jerry don't have a choice either. Because he's gonna listen to what you tell him. He mad. You he can be mad. You can tell him that it's not mad. And what is he gonna do? He gonna be like, what? Like he nothing. But all right. Um, It's interesting. (laughs) It's very interesting. I mean, I don't know. It's it's crazy to me that he cares. I guess he's trying to think about jury management, but like at that point, like, it, is it worth it, or do you just make the move to try to gain favor from the, everyone else in jury? That's what I'd say. Like, don't don't worry about one jury, but worry about the whole jury if you're thinking that way. I don't know. I'm happy to lose one jury vote if I can gain five others. Hello, exactly, because I know how math works. All right, math is math. It's, it's, it's universal. I'm sorry. There's no, we can't say this is math. Think like the math that I know because math is math. And if I lose one, I gain five. Yeah, I'm going to take that bet. It's crazy. Um, George is trying to go back and forth. He's weighing on which way to vote. He's an untouchable swing between the two votes for Matt and two votes for Nina. And he's just like, what do I do? I don't know. Um, Matt obviously starts getting his spider senses in day 43 because he starts to realize, hmm. I'm in danger. Something something is off. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Something's a little off. And um, I don't know. I feel like it might be me. You think of me? It could be me. Which... If no one's talking to you and you have weird vibes, it's generally probably you. Yeah. Mm-hmm, good, good, mm-hmm. Call, good call. Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on. Come <laughs> on. So I'm happy he wakes up. But then Nina tells him, I mean, it's between me and you, apparently. And George is swing vote. And he's like, like, Oh. Oh. What? Wow. Is it? And when he goes to George and Liz, they're like, no, she's desperate. She's just trying to say stuff to throw stuff off. Liz, like, yeah, I know what she's, I, I know what she's doing, and that's fine. Nobody can be mad at Nina for any move she make at this point because it's like, I have no options whatsoever. She's on the bottom, not even in the barrel, but she's like under the barrel. At this uh, point. Like, she is on the rope that's tied to the barrel, barrel. underneath exactly. it. Like, like she she's has no way. <laughs> she she can't even see the barrel. The rope is so far away. She like she's oh like trying. God. I'm <laughs> trying whole... to get to the barrel and, and keep bringing her back. She's no way no budget. No no budget at all. So, so like she anything, has tried, she has to do anything, it. She has tried anything and everything exactly. And yeah. so, um, tribal council. Yeah, they go and, right um, to it. Yeah, they do. And so. JBL asks this question, when strategy fails, can you appeal to other players' humanity to stay in the game? And Liz gives Nina for gives Nina credit for giving it a crack. She tried her best, but it is what it is. The game is the game. She really has no chance here. And um he asked George point blank if Matt's prior challenges factor into the decision when voting Matt. 
And George is like, I mean, it could be a it, it, it could be a factor. But Matt turns around like, but Liz has won the same amount of challenges that I have. So Right. Is like, it a factor if, for her? If we're looking at it all, let's look at everyone fairly, is what Matt just said. That's what Matt said. Matt said, Don't just be looking at me. Look at the person wearing the necklace right now. Mm-hmm. He says, mind your business, and that's her business right now. Mind it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. Like, yes. Mind your business. Stop looking at me. Stop Get, looking at me. Name. Keep my name Look out your there. mouth. <laughs> Look over there. Right. Keep my name out your out mouth. mouth. Keep your name out your mouth. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. He was, that's the energy he was trying to give out, like. Yeah, girl that's what i feel that's what i feel i was like okay okay you might I see you. when you realize you might be at the bottom again not as low as nina but like on the bottom of your lines you're like maybe i should start throwing some thoughts out yeah yeah right right <laughs> oh duh but I, jo- okay. go ahead go, uh, no i was gonna talk about nina's uh but i think we still have a little bit more to, until we get to nina's performance in this yeah because george says he's, he's constantly pondering his best path to the end and jerry claims that there has been one no one true leader in 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 all the way through it's been everybody had their thing this whole time nina is like looking at the truth like yeah it is nonsense okay rolling her eyes like seriously i right there with nina i was like nina you're saying what i'm saying with your eyes because yeah Girl, no one person's leading the girl. Shut no, up. No one person. <laughs> no one, no person. one person is leading this. Uh, Jerry and Matt obviously are leading with Liz and George, right? No. George is. Absolutely uh, not. And you, we've seen George throw a fit when it doesn't go his way. And, and it hasn't been that many times this season that it hasn't gone in his way. Yes, George is running this fucking game. He's running uh, the whole thing. The whole season. He's it's running so the whole annoying. Thing. It's so annoying to, for Jerry to try to gaslight people into believing that everybody is equal partners in this ship. No. no. On every boat, there's one captain. Mm-hmm. We might have like a cruise director sending the fun and games, but they're mm-hmm. not leading the ship away. They're not getting mm-hmm. us to where we need. The cruise director has fun. Sure, Liz is fun. Sure, Jerry's fun. Sure, Matt's fun. But George is the one up in that doing the late night work, roaming around, making sure he gets his plans done. I don't see that from Jerry. I don't see that Matt oh. Liz a little bit, but she might be the cruise director planning the activities, but not leading the ship. Sorry, I okay. just want to get cruise analogies. I'm about to say, since we're talking about cruise analogies, Jerry is the cruise director, period, point blank. He does, he has the fun. Liz may be the co-captain of the boat. Mm-hmm. I, I'll give her that. She may be the co-captain of the boat, but George is clearly the captain. And Matt is the manager of jerry like he's the cruise the head cruise director and jerry's his assistant cruise director or something i don't know if that's a thing but yeah he's like they're they're part of the fun squad jerry's part of the fun squad and matt is the leader of the fun fun squad squad. yes exactly (laughs) matt and jerry are the fun squad and uh and and liz and george are the captain and co-captain of the boat exactly like uh, they i I can't wait to see what happens this coming week because <sighs> me too, me too. <sighs> Lord, child. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about Nina. You go Nina, ahead and talk about Nina. Nina cause... had a performance, and I think she knew her back was against the wall. And she said, "Let me throw my whole entire game at the wall and see if I can do something." After rolling her eyes, looking at the jury members, she wants to talk about. How she was told a name to write it down. She says that an active leader normally is running around, making sure numbers are right, not just at camp, waiting to hear what happens. And um, she concludes saying that shouldn't she probably shouldn't have said some of those things, basically calling out George. <laughs> she realizes that maybe I shouldn't have just called out George and his Paul. I mean, his group, um, because they're probably going to vote me out now. <laughs> But she doesn't, she didn't miss with what she said. Everything she said was accurate. It just wasn't going to help her stay in the game. Yes. 
happier. It wasn't, there wasn't much that she could say other than to, I think, appeal to Matt and to Jerry. But I don't even, I, I think they were so brick solid that they'd never budge. So she just threw it at the wall, the spaghetti to the wall. Nothing and stuck. Nothing, nothing stuck, stuck at all. It was crazy. I loved what she said when it got to time when it was time to vote, and what she said about Matt when she voted for Matt. She was like, "It's either me or you." I've been waiting for you to flip switch and become that really great player. I know that you can be, but you never let go of the golden ticket. And I was like, "Ooh, that mm, hit. Facts. That hit. Facts. Mm-hmm. Facts." She said what we were all thinking. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like Matt could be a really great player in this game if he was to just make some moves of his own, but he's too scared to pull the trigger. And it is. Like, I need... Because, like, he flipped to go work with, with George pre-merge um, in one of his numbers, but he could have flipped and done taken out George. He could have worked with Simon and Nina and Haley. He could have done so many things, but he's like, no, I'm very content with being number three of four when a lion mm-hmm. Right. Okay. But then he turns around and says about Nina, which he voted for, you proved that you're a phenomenal game player and a huge strategic threat. Not wrong. Not wrong at all. But she doesn't have the agency. She might be good, but I don't think she has the agency right now that they're giving her. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't think she makes past Final Four if you keep her in another round. Get George out. Get George yeah. out. But That's just me. I'm very, very yeah. jaded. <laughs> but unfortunately, when it came down to it, George had the swing vote and he decided to put his vote on Nina. And sadly, Nina has been eliminated and is headed to the jury. Princess Nina gets her snop. Uh, she gets snopped her torch snop for the first, the first time, time. Because we know how her first season went. We hate slides because of it. And I think <laughs> Nina literally comes back and shows us the game she was going to try to play in blood versus water. She is dominant. She could swing and swing when she needs to. She has social and strategic prowess. Mm-hmm. She came in, she ate no crumbs left. She left it up at the, the table. Like so proud yeah. of her. I'm so proud of Nina. I was like, she really never had a chance to gain the traction that she needed to make that social capital but the little things that she could do she did and she played each moment correctly I think if she would have not said that about George maybe she would have he pro- made, He says he would have voted out Matt instead of Nina but when she said what she said calling him out he had to go with her mm-hmm. I don't know if that's true I don't know if that's true but he says that he would have, so we got to believe what he say, I guess. But, um, Do we? yeah. <laughs> is is sure. he gaslighting us in confessionals? Who knows? Right. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Nina goes out and goes, I'll go out and play a third time if you invite me back. I think she said, I don't know if it was an exit press or in where, but she said, my mom went out and played six times in this. I'll go out and play seven. Or like, she's like, I'll just keep playing <laughs> until I have to. Like, don't worry. Like, I am, I am love Survivor and I want to show that I'm just as good, if not better, than my mom. I'll keep playing. I, and so, I would love to see some, uh, Nina on U.S. Survivor as well. I want to play all the Survivors. Why not? She would, she would kick U.S. Survivor's format's ass because she 27 is it. She 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 can do that. She did forty she, days and and uh, she's done it. No, she's done it. She can if she she can do twenty six days if she's done forty days. Like she could do it. I would love to see U.S. Survivor reach out to some, even though she played international. Reach out to Nina. Let's, you literally let's have to Sandra's to daughter who wants to play. Hello, hello, do and it. you know what I would love. You know what I would just love? I would love all these survivors to merge into one major, like, world survivor just for a season. And let's see some of the best of the best from each survivors come and have to play. Could you imagine? You were talking to every, like, international super fan's dreams, like, 
who would die. Like what they're doing with the challenge international. Yes. Like, it happened with Survivor. Yes. <laughs> they do that in Survivor. Oh my God. They have the cast for it. They do. Jeff, Jeff Jonathan, Nico, get your people together. Let's get it to happen. I mean, literally, even if it's, like you said, even if it's just those three, even if it's uh, Australia, South Africa, and U.S., bring them together, and let's just do it. That would be amazing. And and we know know Paramount Plus knows about Australian Uh and about uh South African and New Zealand, because they were all on Mm -hmm. there for a little Mm -hmm. bit. We know that they know they exist. Make it happen. Make it happen. Ooh. That would be like amazing. That would be amazing because if you think about all these people who have won survivors in their respective uh, uh, places and how they're known as the best of the best in Survivor, like, could you imagine a Queen Haley and King George against like a Queen uh, Parvati? Parvati and King Boston Rob or you know, Lord. I mean, or Tyson, or you know, just some of these really great dominant, <sighs> dominant yeah. players. Like I'd love to see like the meshing and just see, uh, make it happen, please. I don't know who, please. but make it happen. Oh, that would cool. be amazing. I'm so ready for it. Uh, if they I'll started filming it. tomorrow, I would be. The happier right. than happy. <laughs> Do you know I will I will stay up to three o'clock in the morning to watch it if the episodes if it came on if that's mm-hmm. what the time it happened. I'll, I'll do it. it. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> oh gosh, but, but that, that's it. We, we did have it. a finale coming up. With finale week. coming up. Yeah. Like we have two episodes left of the season. Where is the time gone? <sighs> One is dropping tomorrow or today. Yeah. In uh three and a half what? hours from yeah, recording this right now. Happen. It's at yeah. three thirty, uh, four thirty Eastern time. It airs. Um, so yeah, will I be staying up? I'm we'll not. see. I might take uh, a nap we'll... and wake up. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for the finale or the penultimate, one of the two. I'm Matter gonna enough. wait till it drops and I see my my uh, subscription come up and say, "Bling, Survivor has dropped," and I'll watch it tomorrow. <laughs> And you know, you're probably smarter and better for that. <laughs> you know what? You, that's right. That's T. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to make a promise to watch it as it's going on. No. Um, but yeah, that's it. We're done. We got it. Those are our thoughts. Y'all know what to do. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Tell us what you think about Survivor Australia. Who are you looking forward to? Because the final four is now... George, uh, Liz, Jerry, and Matt. So out of that final four, who do you think is going to pull it off? Uh, let us know in the comments below. And um, are you yeah, follow up. for a uh, returnee or for the newbies? Right. One three, three. New, three newbies, one returning. Who, 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 we'll and see. we have two for two heroes versus villains. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We'll find out this week. We'll find out. <laughs> Follow us on Twitter at, at the cup underscore reality. So you can find out when all of our videos will be dropping. We got lots of lots of videos coming out this week. Literally, I think we're up to 10 videos dropping this week. So you don't want to miss it. We're trying to get a thousand followers by the end of the year. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Help us get to our goal of a thousand followers by the end of the year. Because we want to be able to maybe get monetized by this and keep bringing you more and more information and if more and more content. And if we get more content, we get more people, we get more people, we can do better, bigger and better things. So help us out. Just subscribe, blah, blah, blah. If you like, you know, just me and Ashley, you just want to follow me and Ashley, you know, you can do that. Follow us down there. There's our links. We're kind of cool people. And also, if you want to get the cup merch, Lana G Creations. Oh, Etsy. That's this the cup. I'll turn it the right way. That's the cup. <laughs> the cup cup. And we have hats. And we're gonna have sweatpants and shirts coming soon. You know, all kind of stuff. So that's where you can go to get all our stuff. Thank you, Ashley, for joining me for talking more Australian Survivor. Oh, always love it when my schedule's here. I am here to talk about one of my favorite shows. So I'm 
literally so happy and I can't wait to talk about the finale next week. Yes, finale. Oh my gosh. Can we believe we are coming to an end of this amazing season? So, yep, that's it. Cheers, you guys. Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Make sure uh, you're not a pawn on the way out. No, please don't be a pawn or or, or be, be a, a good pawn. Be, be a, a good pawn. pawn. Be a pawn with a resume. Mm-hmm. All right, good night. Yep.